welcome to the program. And the WikiLeaks saga continues to dominate globally and in Australia. The government here moved today to play down the impact of the latest series of WikiLeaks disclosures as detailed in Fairfax newspapers, exposing right-wing power broker and minister Senator Mark R. Bibb as a regular confidential contact of the US Embassy in Canberra. In embassy cables obtained by WikiLeaks, Senator Abib is reported as having discussed with the Americans leadership tensions between Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard well before the former Prime Minister was ousted in June. Past and present politicians and diplomats are seeking to hose this down as the normal business of diplomacy. But it's also sparked a debate on whether there's been too much subservience towards the US. Political editor Heather Hewitt. As the WikiLeak disclosures pour in thick and fast, leading to one titillating newspaper headline after another, Senator Mark Abib is the latest to be outed as one featured regularly in US embassy dispatches to Washington. There's nervousness in political ranks of all persuasions about who might be next. I would be very surprised if the US embassy in Canberra didn't have as frank a conversation with a very wide range of coalition um, parliamentarians and leaders as they do with the Labor side and so I think uh, a lot of people will be very reluctant to throw um, uh, too many aspersions on Abib and others precisely because uh, they themselves or their uh, or their colleagues will be in the same boat and they must all be opening the paper with some trepidation every morning to see uh, whose name's up next. I think in an immediate sense it'll probably have a chilling uh, impact in terms of people speaking very frankly, this will happen for a while uh, and I think that's been damaging. All the Australian public sees in terms of that relationship is television images like this during Hillary Clinton's recent visit here. What comes as a shock to some is that much more has been going on behind the scenes for years, including politicians dobbing on their own colleagues to the US Embassy. But in political and diplomatic circles, this is apparently considered a perfectly normal state of affairs. I think we ought to just understand one point. That in diplomacy, every day, in diplomacy every month, in diplomacy every year, there are literally thousands, tens of thousands of conversations that take place. It's uh, part of the work that we do uh, and I don't think people should read anything at all sinister into that. In general terms you would expect the um, American embassy and other key embassies, perhaps not all embassies, but other key embassies, um, to cultivate relations with members of parliament. So there's nothing unusual about that. They uh, no doubt have cultivated a relationship with Mark Habib. He's uh, believed to be sympathetic to America and uh, the American alliance. I hope that Australian diplomats in Washington are doing the ex exactly the same uh, to the US political system. But while Senator Abib's New South Wales Labor colleagues have rushed to defend him, there are question marks over whether he's been a little too zealous in passing on information to the Americans, such as forecasting a leadership challenge. It reads to me as though he has become quite a good friend of one of the officers in the embassy, I suppose that would be uh, my take on it. So what he says is pretty frank stuff. I, uh, um, you know, um, would have to say that when you're chatting away with foreign diplomats, you, um, you know, want to be, do you want to exercise a, a degree of discretion? The reason that Australia has such a close relationship with the Americans is that we work the patch consistently and constantly. And if this extends to briefings on leadership tensions and upcoming coups, that's apparently all fair game and follows the pattern of previous political eras. For example, for example, in 1991 the United States Embassy in Canberra, which was very close to Prime Minister Hawke, was telling the White House Prime Minister Hawke would be the person to greet President Bush when he arrived in Canberra. The New South Wales ILP had a different view and informed a consulate in Sydney when asked the likelihood was that Paul Keating would be the Prime Minister. And so it proved to be. Prime Minister Keating greeted President Bush when he arrived. As for Senator Abib's role in more recent leadership developments and briefings, he issued a short statement today saying he was known as a strong supporter of Australia's relationship with the US and was an active member of the American-Australian Leadership Dialogue. This is a group of Australian and US politicians, business leaders and journalists which meets annually to privately canvass the affairs of both nations. It does show that the, the leadership dialogue is, a, is a, 
a very effective institution in pulling together a lot of fairly significant players in the Australian political landscape uh, to talk to their American counterparts. The trouble is it does also reflect the fact that the leadership dialogue itself is rather an exercise in mutual self-congratulation. Now this is a position that a lot of America's other allies would like to occupy. And over the years, a lot of other countries have come privately to people engaged in the dialogue and, and said, now, how do we have a relationship with the Americans like you have? Well, the answer is you have to work at it for half a century. What concerns some seasoned observers is that these latest leaks reveal a relationship that could be interpreted as being a little too close and one that fails to adequately address relations with China, for example. I don't think there's anything inherently improper about it. I, I guess what's striking about it, though, is how hard people in the Labor Party, people in Australian politics in general, work at being liked by the Americans. And there's nothing wrong with being liked by the Americans, but I, what I, strikes me about what we've seen in the WikiLeaks saga so far is so little evidence of us asking for something back, so little evidence of us trying to really have a serious conversation with Americans about what's important to us. <laughs> What's all too plain, no matter how those involved paint this, is that the leaks are very uncomfortable for Australia and the US. It's embarrassing for both. Um, it's, of course, literally embarrassing for um, Akabib or, or, or Kevin Rudd, and no doubt there'll be plenty more people who'll be embarrassed um, over the next few weeks and months, not just in Australia but around the world. There are more damaging headlines expected in Fairfax newspapers tomorrow. Political editor Heather Ewart.